Hello, this is Randy with Excel for Freelancers and welcome to the automated time, billing, tracking and payment application. In this week, I'm going to show you how you can track your time and projects, customers through any device, any application, bringing that automatically into Excel, generating an invoice in Excel and in Stripe, tracking those payments and automatically bringing those back into Excel fully automated billing system. It's going to be an incredible training. I cannot wait to share it with you. So let's get started. All right. Thanks so much for joining me. I've got a really unique and incredible training today. Today, I'm going to show you how you can create your own fully automated billing system. That's right. We're going to go through every step with you. And that means you're going to be able to track your time, your projects, your customers through any device using an incredible third party application. We're going to then automatically bring that information back into Excel. We're going to then and on a single click, we're going to be able to generate invoices based on that time and billing information. We're going to send that information to Stripe. Stripe is going to generate an invoice. It's going to create a payment link. Then customers are then going to click on that payment link, pay that bill, and that payment is going to track automatically back into Excel all in just a few clicks. So it's going to be a really incredible training like nothing I've ever taught before. This one will be a little bit different. You won't want to miss it. I hope you do like these trainings. If you do, then I would just ask a few things from me. If you could just click that subscription down below, and I really appreciate that. That was going to help us. Don't forget to click the notification icon bell. That'll ensure that you get these trainings each and every week. If you do like this application or applications like these, I've got 200 of my best applications now on sale available for download in a single zip file it's only 77 dollars and i've got a little bonus on top of that so it's more than 200 right now if you act now so that would really help us out that keeps these trainings free each and every week i've got so much to show you in this training so i really appreciate it. also thank you for your views likes and shares the one we created just less than two weeks ago the uh, automated purchase order with inventory that was an incredible application now over 100,000 views in just 12 or 13 days an incredible feat so thank you very much i really appreciate that let's get started on this training i cannot wait this one's going to be a little bit different because this is a large application there's a lot of components if we were to create this from scratch it would be four to six hour training i don't want to put you through that but what i want to do is i really want to focus on the automation aspect of this application how do we automate things in excel how do we use third-party tools such as toggle which i'm going to show you such as Indragomat, that's integromat such as IntegraMap that's going to actually bring everything together, and how do we use Stripe, an incredible payment processing application that's global that can actually create invoices, create payment links, and actually take in credit cards and bill those customers, and how we can integrate really tightly Excel, and how do we do that automatically with just a few clicks of a button? So we're going to go through all that. Let me show you what I mean first. We'll go through a scenario and how that would work. So let's go into Toggle real quick, and I'll show you what kind of scenario we would be looking at and then we'll get and then we'll go into more of a detail so toggles a great time tracking I'm gonna walk you through every step but basically let's say we have a project so let's just say website update right and you want to put in this track time and you want to select a specific project you got a website update project you'll start your time or you can do this from any device right this particular third-party application works on mobile phones websites browsers whatever so you've tracked your time you stop your time right so then what I want this information this time I want to come automatically in Excel and that's just what we're gonna do with just a few clicks of a button back in Excel we go what we want to do is we want to sync time log entry so we're gonna do that and say that one entry is then what we're gonna do is I'm gonna review the pending that item that we just created the website update is now inside Excel with the minimum rates and everything is going here so we've brought that time tracking right into excel all we need to do is click one more button it's going to send that directly to stripe and create an invoice so when we click that button it's going to send it all the way to stripe then the customer will get a copy and we can get a link automatically so we have we just created one invoice let's take a look at what that's going to look like inside stripe 
And we're going to go directly inside the Stripe account. We've got a test mode here. If we go into our customers here, we're going to see that invoices under the invoices. And we're going to walk you through every step of this. That invoice I just created is here. We can send the customer. We can add a note. If we want to view the invoice, we can download it. We can see what it looks like. We can also pay for it. So let's go ahead and click the PDF. We're going to download that and take a look at it. Here's the invoice that got created inside that. So that's that the website update here. It got created in the customer could get a copy as well. We can also view it inside there. We can send the invoice, charge a customer directly in Stripe. They're going to get a payment link. They're going to be able to click on this payment link. You also have this same payment link inside Excel. When they click to payment, they can click right here. So we can send them this direct link. I've already downloaded this link and I'm going to show you every step. We're just giving you a rundown. They're going to click pay. That payment's going to process. We're in test mode, so we can do everything. I'm going to walk you through this too. So they can download the receipt. They can pay. They put in their credit card information. Back in Excel, we can now process those payments. Let me take a look at this. And now all we have to do is click process the payments. And all the payments, one payment's been processed. And now all we need to do is just enter this invoice. Again, we see that that payment was paid on and all the information was here. So it's we've got a lot to cover in this training. That's how it's going to work. I still got to get this paid amount to go payment here. We've got that. All right. So we've got so much to cover here. Let's get started on this. Basically, what I want to do is I want to walk you through every step of the process. We're not going to be writing really much code at all in this training because there's so much to cover. I want to take my time and go really slowly and walk you through the entire process from start to finish. I just went over a really quick idea, but basically, if you want to learn how to create this invoice, I've already got that for you. I've done something called Invoice from Scratch. I'm going to put the link down below. Invoice from Scratch, that was a video we did uh, a little while ago, and I'll make sure that you get a copy of that video link so you can go ahead and watch that. So we're not going to create this from scratch. I'm going to show you how we can create this automated time and billing and payment tracker. So the first thing we were going to do is we're going to start out with tracking our time and billing. So we're going to go into that toggle and that's a really, really great application. So we're going to look at this. So this is what I want. I want to be able to create time tracking and I want to have that information, but not just time tracking. I want to be able to create customers, create users, create projects. So we can have all of that sent into Excel. Excel is going to be able to handle all of that for us and track it all. So how do we do that? Well, Toggle is going to, we're going to start out with that. That's our starting block, right? So we want to track all that. So Toggle is a great free application. There's some additional features. If you want to do charges and things like that, then you can pay for it. But for now, we're just going to use the free app. So Inside this, we'll start out with teams, right? So you can have a team, you can create additional users. In this case, team members here, I've got two of them set up here. Those would be likewise, in our application, we call them users. So inside our application here, we've got a list of users. So I'm gonna go over that. So we've got users here where I've got two users. Now, when we add a user inside or a team member inside Toggle, it's gonna to automatically add that here. So we've got an ID that was generated by Toggle. We've got a name and an email. We can then add cost and billing rates if we want. So just some ideas. So that's automatically gonna be here. I just changed the name to Lisa just so we had a different name here and there. But basically we have a user ID here that gets generated from Toggle. And I'll show you how to bring all all that information in. As you can see, it's a large project. If we were going to write the code, it'd take three days. So we have to, you know, sometimes we can write the code on similar ones. This one, I want to be able to take you through it. Okay. All right. So we've got users and we'll create them from Toggle. We can also create them draw. We can just add them here as well. So there's nothing preventing us from doing that. We also have clients. Clients are our customers. So when we add a client here, so if I add a client here, let's just say um, Thomas Fried. Okay, so if we click on that, create it. What I want is I want to automatically send that client information into Excel so we can do that update. And so how do we do that? We, how do we send it? Well, we use, of course, Integromat to do just that. Integromat is going to help us do that. It's going to do a lot of our automation for it. If, we do, if you don't know what Integromat is, we're going to walk through that. So we're going to go through that in a moment. So we have teams, we have clients, and then we have projects. Projects are assigned to individual customers. So if we want to create a new project, what we can do is just create a, we can call this, let's say, app testing. 
and we can create a brand new project creating and we can assign a customer right so we want to basically assign a specific customer or we can do a create a new project inside a specific workspace we have a different workspace so we can do that create a project and we can do that once we create a project like a b testing we can also assign a customer right so we can do that very easily if we want to so projects app testing and we maybe want to do we can add different members to that if we want as well so lots of things we can do with that we can then edit the project so what i want to do is I want, you can also select a client if we have a specific client we want we can save that and it's going to assign that project to that client i want all that information to come into excel too any changes or any new projects i want that to come in so we've got projects we've got clients we've got team members all the and lastly we have the timer right our time tracking all those instances of time when we start a time and when we stop a time I want th that time information also to make it into Excel. So that way we have a fully automated time tracking and billing and information, okay? So that's gonna come into Excel. Now, once it gets into Excel, what we're gonna be able to do is track everything. So let's go over inside Excel, just what we have, the foundation. I've got an admin screen, okay? Now, we need to store that information. When our customers come in directly from Toggle, we need to store it somewhere. When our projects come in, we have a new project, when we have an updated project, we need to store that. When we have a time tracking, right, those time entries that we just spoke of, we need to track that as well. And also payments and users. So we've got to track those five different information. We're going to use Dropbox to do all that. Dropbox is a great file. So I've got it all in here. Inside a single folder inside my Dropbox, I've mapped everything. Based Basically, you can see the mapping here to each folder. We've got customers. The customers I've just added, that's going to be here. I've got payments. If there's any payments, that are going to be added. Projects, changes in the product, we're going to be saved here. As you notice, this project just got created. And um, also time tracking, any time tracking would going to become here. And also users, any changes or new users would come here. So basically, once it ends up in Dropbox, it's going to allow us to then check that folder. And if there's any changes or any updates, we can take that information, extract the information from those TXT files, and then we're going to bring that into Excel. And then that's going to come inside our data. So it could go inside our invoice list here. This is a list of all of our invoices. It could go into an invoice item list. These are all the items that make up an invoice. What's an invoice item? So for example, if we enter an invoice here, these are individual invoice items. So they get brought back all the way in here. Of course, we can add our own items too if we want, right? That's no problem but we do want to automate as much as we can if we're going to be tracking projects and time for multiple people we can invoice our customers almost effortlessly and accurately with this system and the power of excel is what i want to show you that can excel can tie it all together when we use these really great third-party tools so that's what we're going to do so we can bring in these invoices and we can bring in this data so we have these individual items that's called invoice items and they're stored here they're all based on the unique invoice id so notice that all three of these belong to invoice number one these two belong to invoice number four and so on and so forth we also have a list of customers just a basic list we have a customer id this customer id was generated by toggle we have a customer name a date that they were added on and a Stripe ID, when it gets sent over to Stripe, Stripe also creates a brand new customer, and then an ID is signed there as well. So we want a Stripe ID as well. We want to put in their address and their email, and then just some empty fields if we need to add that later on. Again, projects also, when we add projects inside Toggle, I want that information to come directly in so we can keep track of our individual projects. And I also want to know what client was assigned to that. There's a client ID. Notice there's a client ID here. Notice we have individual customer IDs here. So three, one, this one ending 1331, if we see here, this project here, application development, is assigned to that particular client. So we have a client ID so we know exactly which projects were assigned. This is a fully automated system and then lastly we've got payments right payments we don't necessarily need, I'm gonna probably get rid of this because why because I can track I'll just remove this sheet we don't need it because I can actually track the payments directly inside the invoice list right so inside this invoice list I can put a payment right here a pay date and a payment amount so we don't need that payment it was something that i had an idea and i'm just going to delete that sheet we don't need that because i can bring the payments in because payments are going to be applied to a specific 
invoice. So when we have that, all we need to do is apply that payment and apply the pay date. So we know, and we have an invoice ID. This is an invoice ID that's assigned by Stripe. So you can imagine we have so much to go over, even without us doing any coding today. So we're going to have, so we have also emails. This is something that I kind of wanted to add in. I kind of ran out of time. Basically, I would like automated emails, but I can only squeeze so much in a few days of, of work here. So you can imagine, here's a great, here's a challenge for you. When we create an invoice, automate those emails. We've created emails in the past before. Automate, a, you can create different email templates based on payment information. So it's a great opening for you to challenge yourself to create some automated emails. And I've got a sheet here. It's something I just kind of ran out of time. It's something I would really like to do. Billing items are something that we can add. Remember, billing items are items that you may want to add inside your invoice. Notice I've got two billing items. If I enter a billing item in the invoice, it is a drop down list of billing items, and we can inside that, and it's going to automatically insert that information, the rate and the total. We also have cost. Costing can help us. There's something I put in here but didn't fully complete because once we have the cost, right, once we have the rate, we know the profit from a specific invoice. You could put a, I was thinking about putting like a little profit and loss a pie chart here or something so that we know the profit and loss on every single job. All we have is a total cost and we have, but you know, like I said, I'm, I'm limited with the amount of time that I have a few days to work on these. So, uh, you can understand that. And I really don't want to create too many large multi-parts just because the, the views are generally not there on the larger. So I try to pack all the value into one week if I can. Okay, so we understand that. We understand how we're bringing this. We've got a lot of different data. And I'm going to go over slowly with you every step of the way. So we'll start out with toggle. How do we get that information in? How do we bring all that information in? inside there. Well, we're going to use Integromat. So what we want to do is we want to wait for changes. Is there a change to this timer? Is there a change to a project or a new project? Is there a change to a client or is there a change to a team member? If there's any changes, we want to send that into our Excel application. But how do we do that? How do we trigger that? Well, that is where Integromat comes in. Integromat is an amazing tool. And basically, it's Integromat.com. And it's free for up to about 1,000 different automations per month. So you get a lot of free space. If you want to pay for it, it's certainly worthwhile. I'll include the link down below. I think I'm working with them. I'm going to try to get you a special promotion. I've got a link down below for you. So basically, you've got all these possible integrations. I think there's almost a thousand types of integrations now with almost every. Well, you don't need to search for these, but what you might want to do is search for something specific. So what we want to do is we want to work with Toggle. So if we click on Toggle, we're going to find that. And we also want to work with Dropbox. So what we're going to do is we're also going to click on Dropbox. And so once we find Dropbox, then we have those two that we're going to work. If we want to send information from Toggle, we're going to send it directly to our Dropbox. So I'm going to click Continue. And what that's going to do is going to create a trigger. Now, what's the trigger? Now, the first trigger is going to be something that happens in Toggle. So I'm going to click Toggle. Now, what do I want to look for? Now, there's different things. I've created them all already, but what do we want to look for? Are when workspaces change, we're not working with workspaces too much. Projects change, right? Notice we, or when tasks change, when users change, when clients, or with time entry. So let's just say we're going to do time entry. Now I'm going to show you what I've done already, but I want to take you through that. So the first thing you'll do is click add. You want to basically look for the API token inside Toggle, API token. So where can you find that? You go inside Toggle here, and you look inside your, your information here, your settings here, inside your account, your profile settings here. And then what you'll do is you'll scroll down to the bottom. And it's okay if you see my, my you can click to reveal, you can see my API token because after this training, all I need to do is just reset it. So it's no problem. It's not, for, for me purposely, I can just reset it and I'll get a brand new one. So here's the API token. What you want to do is you want to copy that and you'll want to paste that directly inside this API token. And that's going to automatically, and then we're going to click continue. And what that's going to do, is, and also with maximum number of returns, we're just focused on one transaction at a time. So I'm just going to click one, right? I only want to return one because we're set up for that. Then what I want to do is I want to do from now on. I don't want to. I don't want any the past history of transactions. I only want it from this point moving forward. So I'm going to click OK. Now what I want to do is I want to. You can do two things. You can add a Dropbox, but what we want to do is we want to. What do we want to do? I really want to create. A overwrite a text file, create or overwrite a text file. So that's what I'm going to do. If you do create, I want to overwrite because I want to use TXT. And then we have to map the file. We can map it or we can select a file. If I were to select a file, I'd search Dropbox. And also, if you don't have a Dropbox connection, you just click add. And what that's going to do, you'll put a name, any name, and it's going to 
automatically sync to your Dropbox. You do need to have a Dropbox account. It's free up to two gigabytes, www.dropbox.com. If you don't have it, it's an amazing tool for file sharing. That's gonna help us bring that information inside. So Dropbox is what we wanna use. So connect your Dropbox account. Once it's connected, it'll, this pop-up will come. Of course, I already have it, so we can cancel that. But what we wanna do is once it's connected, you'll use Overwrite, then we wanna select a file. And we're gonna click Select a File, and we're gonna browse for the specific folder where we want that to come in. And where we want, you've got all kinds of folder. And I've got one thing called Time and Billing here. And then I wanna select a subfolder inside Time and Billing. I wanna look for Time Tracking. That's the one I want. I'll select it. That's the folder I want. Then what we wanna do is we wanna assign a name to it. What is a unique name? But to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna change this to Map. The only only reason we did that is just to get this file path here that to make it accurate it makes it easier then I'm going to change it over that got erased not helpful for us okay so mapping a file path all we really need to do if you want to go into your file path just go into your Dropbox here and we'll focus on time and billing and we want time tracking and what we're going to do is just all I'm going to do is just copy this right here making sure that we have that path I'm going to paste it in it's easier but basically you get the idea here so then once we have that I'm going to use this forward slash again then I want to assign a unique name dot and what is that unique name well I'm going to use this tie this ID here and then I'm going to use dot txt that particular ID is for a specific time entry okay then that's going to give us the name of our file you just want to make sure that the file name is unique for this time entry then what I want to do is I want to know what is the contents of that file well I need several information what do i need inside that well let's take a look inside our table if we have invoice items we're going to start out i need the time entry id i need to know what user i need to know the project and i need to know the description and the start and the end so i want to know all of that information and i need to bring it all inside that txt file so how do we get that information in there well the best way to do that is just to bring it in from here so all we need to do is click on that so the first thing again what i want is that id we can do that here or we can use that then what i want to do is i want to use a separator some kind of a delimiter i'm going to use asterisk for that then what i want is as we mentioned here inside our table we want to go in order we want the user the project project then the description so that's just what i'm going to do the user here then i'm going to separate this by another asterisk then i want the project id click on that and then i'm going to separate that by an asterisk then i want the description then i'm going to click here description then i want the start time and i want the stop time so if i click start time and then asterisk and then stop time now that's great but what i also want is i want this these times i want them formatted they're going to come in an odd format it's not going to look this pretty but i want it in a very nice format so how do we set a specific format all we need to do is use some of the calendar so if we go before that and put the cursor right before that if you'll notice the cursor right before that then what do we do we just enter something all oh, let's go back in here put the cursor back there then i'm going to enter the calendar and i'm going to look for something called format date or format date that's what i want here format date so the best way to do that let's undo that so if and then if you take a look in here, I can actually, I'm going to show you what some of the formats are. So basically it is the date and then we have a semicolon and then whatever format you want. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So how do we do that? So let's, let's clear out what we have here, put it, put it back to where it was. And we can type it in manually now that we know format and then date then parentheses and then we're going to have the date then i want the semicolon and then i want to put in the for the date of the format so we'll use mm slash dd slash y y y y for us that's it i'm going to do the same thing with the end time right i want the same thing i want the date and the time but i also want the time right so how do we get the time if we take a look in this format date we really want the times too so how do we get that let's take a look at that we have here is this one's good so all i need to do is just h h m m and then a. let's take another look at that because it was a little bit quick here inside that format date here we can see here because that looks the, just the right format h h colon mm slash a so that's what i want right there this is it all i need to do is just copy and before it disappears copy that and then put it directly inside here so paste that in here okay now i'm going to do the same thing with the stop time so i'm going to drag that stop time right inside here right inside here and then i'm going to bring that in all right so that's basically all i had to do here let's clear that out and go back to where we have it right here so now 
We're not going to use this one. We'll use the sample. So before the format here, I'm going to put that asterisk and make sure that exists here. Format the stop time. Semicolon again here. And then all I need to do is just copy and paste this here. And then don't forget the end parentheses here. We need that too. Okay, so that's it. Copy and paste that and bring it in here. Now that's going to format it properly. And then, of course, the end parentheses. There we go. So now that's all we have to do. If we take a look at that here, we see everything is properly formatted. We have the ID. Then we have the asterisk that separates each one of them. And we have the format, this one, how it's going to be formatted. And again, the asterisk, another format date, and that's it. Okay, so then what we want to do is then I want to bring the information here. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to get rid of this one here, the one, and I'm going to go into the one that I've created just so you can see. So now what we have is inside scenarios, and I'm going to share, I'm going to leave this one. We don't need to save the changes on this one. And I'm going to go back into our folder here. Now you can create multiple folders. If you have a lot of scenarios, all you need to do is create a new folder here. And you can separate all your scenarios. You just need to drag and drop them inside. So here's what I have. So now the one we were just working on is called test time entry. And so what I want to happen is here's, here's what we just created. And here's what I've created. Basically, we have the ID, the text, and the formatted, everything that you just saw. There's one differentiation. On every single change, this is going to, from toggle, every time we make a change to the timer, every time, it's going to send information here. Every change, right, right, every single when time enters change. But what I don't want is I really only want to send the information when the task is completed. For example, I only want to send the information when we have a stop time. If there's no stop time, I don't want to send the information to Dropbox, only when we have a completed task. So we can set up a filter inside this. All we need to do is just click here, and then we give it a label. And then what we do is we give it a condition. In this condition, I want to make sure that the stop time exists. We can create all kinds of different conditions. So that means if, the, if we get a trigger where the start time is there, but there's no stop time, it's not going to pass through. We've created an effect, a filter to do just that. So now we have it. So now only those times, only those entries where there's a start time and a stop time, that is exactly how we do that. So now if we create it, create it, let's just call this site fixes, and we assign it a project here. We can assign it any project that we have. Let's just say this website update, and we click start. It's going to start. It's not going to send anything. Now, how do you know that it's sending? We can look in the history. We can see a history of everything that's going on inside in Checkermat. So I'm going to stop that right here. And now what it's going to do, in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to set it up on a timer. See this little clock here? When we click that, it's going to say how often do we want to check for that? How often do we want to check toggle to see if there's changes? Well, I'm going to check it every single one minute. Okay? It's got to be equal, higher than equal to one. So every minute we're going to check on those. And we're going to click OK. Now what I want to do is I want to see the history. It's already on. Any changes you make, you'll need to click Save. If you want to check just once, you just click Just Run Once. And make sure when you're ready to go, you turn it on. And then it's going to check every minute for time tracking changes. When it's found a change, and it's going to go through here. If that change has a completed tax, it's going to go into your Dropbox. It's then going to create a specific file inside your Dropbox under time tracking. If I refresh this, and we'll, let's go in here, let's give it a little bit of time, go into the history here. We also have a history, so we know what went on. Oh, yeah, we have to stop the time here. Let's stop the time. Okay, we've got it for 2 minutes and 45 seconds. Site fixes there. Okay, let's go into the Dropbox folder. There it is. It's just coming. Let's take a look at this text file that got created and see exactly what it looks like. It looks like here. Okay, we have our entry, our time ID entry. We have, and let's take a look at the table so we can see it up against here. There, now we'll put it up against each one of them so we can see the difference. So we have our user ID, which is this one, 208. 369. Then we have our project ID. We have our description separated by asterisks. Then we have our start time formatted just the way we wanted. Then we have our end time also formatted just the way we wanted. Everything is in here. It got automatically brought into our. So now once we have it here, what I want to do is I want to take the first available row and I want to put all that information into right here. That's what we're going to do in the next step because that is the macro that we're going to run when we do it. When we click on the invoice and I click on sync timeline entries, it is that macro that's going to take that information and bring it directly inside this invoice. There it is right here. That's the information we just. So how do we do that? Well, let's take a look inside the VBA. If you go into the developers, Visual Basic, you can also press Alt 
F11 to get you there. And I've got several modules here that we're going to go over. Okay, so the first thing what I want to do is I want to focus on our time invoice items. Time invoice items. So this is the macro that just got run. It's called time tracking items. Check for new or updates, right? If we make an update, it'll be in here as well. So check. So first of all, I want to check for any new users. I'm going to go. There's three macros that we're going to check for. I want to check for new users. I want to check for new customers. And I want to check for new projects. So those are three different macros. They're all relatively the same. We're basically just checking a folder, checking one of these folders here, checking uh, whether it's a customer folder to see or checking a pro project folder or basically or user folder to checking if there's any entries. If there are, we're going to update those databases. So the good thing is these macros are relatively the same. It's the same process. So once you you learn one you can do them all so first of all I want to know how many entries how many time entries are we doing so I want to keep that as a long number so we're going to dimension that as a long we're going to set the folder path right we need to make sure we have correct folder path so we've set that inside the admin this time we're going to be looking for time tracking that's the folder path I want to make sure that's accurate that's where our information is going to go so I need to make sure that c6 actually has a proper directory so we're going to check that with the folder path we're going to assign it to c6 and i also want to make sure that there's a backslash also on the end of it because we're going to be adding a file to that so putting that backslash there then what we're going to do is we're going to check to make sure that folder path is accurate using directory folder path vb directory if it's empty or if the folder path itself is empty meaning it's not an accurate this would be it's not an accurate folder it's not an accurate path or it's it's not a path or it doesn't exist at all in that case we need to let the user know we can't check a folder if it doesn't doesn't exist so we need to let the user know for a proper Dropbox time tracking folder so that's just going to make sure that the folder is correct and the path is correct once we know that what I want to do is I want to loop through all of the txt files those, those little files that we created inside that so we're going to set that we're going to loop through all of it. first of all we need to determine the file name it's going to be based on a wildcard character and what that means is for every single file inside that folder that ends with the words dot txt the letters dot txt this is what we want to assign that so we're going to loop through everything if it doesn't have the dot txt it's going to be ignored so then what we want to do is we want to do something while they're still so we're going to basically uh, cycle through all of the txt files inside that folder we can use that with a do while loop in excel do while the length of the file name is greater than zero if for some reason it's less then we can get out of the loop First of all, we need to assign the file path. That's the entire file path. It's the folder path that we defined up here, plus the file name that we defined here. That's gonna be the entire file name. Once we have that, what we can do is we can then open that up, or we wanna open the text file and look inside. So we can do just that. The file path is for input as one. That means the first row inside that, we're gonna focus our attention only on that first line everything's on that first line that's all we need to do we're going to assign that first line a string time data that's the string once we've put all that data in a string we no longer need that text file so we can close it up with the next line and then what we want to do is remember we've taken that text file and we've put asterisks between each field inside our dropbox so we need to use that asterisk as a delimiter so that we can separate out into an array all of the different fields so I believe there was four or five of them and there are actually six of them in here so we want to make sure that we have it we need to separate that data because we have multiple parts right inside the invoice items we have entry user id project id description so we have these six fields here that we need to separate and they're all separated by asterisk so once we can do that we put that inside an array we and look here let's keep that open and let's so inside this so we have the text file here so each one of these is separated by the asterisk so we, it's basically an array here so we need to separate that then once we have it in an array we can cycle through each one of them so to do that we add an array here the time array equals split we want to do is we want to split that entire string and we want to split it by the asterisk once it's split we can then work for it okay we can then what i want to do is i want to found the time id i have to know does it exist or not right if it exists let's say we've fixed a time right? let's say this time id let's say we made an update to a start time or we made an update to an end time i need that update to automatically update our database so what i want to do is does the time entry exist already i need to see if it exists so how do we get that time entry id 
Well, the first thing we do is we're going to look it up. The time array is zero. The first one, our first value in that array is zero. Zero is, means not, it doesn't start at number one. Inside arrays, it starts at zero. So that first item is our time ID. So I'm going to take this time ID right here, this ID here, and I'm going to put it into a put it into a find and I'm going to basically do a search for it. Does it exist inside this time entry? And how do we do that? Well, we can use a named range for that. So we have a named range called time inventory items time ID. So let's take a look inside that named range. We've gone over named range before. If you've been following my trainings, a named range is here. It's something that I created here. So basically, time entry invoice items. It is this array that's going to encompass all the data based on a dynamic formula, okay? Using the offset. So we've got a named range that's dynamic and it's going to increase as we add data. So what I want to do is I want to look for it. If it's found, then I want to update the row. If it's not found, I want to add a new row. So that's all we need to do is just to determine the row. Is it existing or not? So we could do that here. Set the found time, dot range, because we're already inside the invoice. This uh, we're going to find, we're looking for what? We're looking for the first item in our array, which is that time entry and up. We're going to search based on values and hold. If it's found, then we need to look for it. If found is nothing, that means it's not found, not found here. In that case, we're going to assign it a brand new row. So the time row is going to be equal to the last row with a value plus one. That's going to be the first available row. Otherwise, let's just put found here. I'm going to put found. And here I'm going to put in not found so we can see the difference. So here is not found. Okay, so if it's found, the time row is based on whatever the current row is, which is the found time. This is defined as a range here in the row. So that's the existing row. Then what we do, regardless if it's new, regardless if it's existing, all we need to do is just update all the information in here. And we can use a loop to do just that. So for time columns, we've got six to do. One through six, right? Column one through column six. So everything's in order. Column one all the way through column six. All we need to do is just update that. Now to do that, remember the array, the value starting array at zero, but the but we're on column one. So if we're going to update the row and the column, we need to get that information. It's going to be based inside this array. This array is located here. So it's going to be the time column, which is one, starting at one, minus one. So that means the first value, which is our ID, is going to be zero, then one. So inside an array, it's going to go zero to five. While well, inside our column, it's going to go one through six. So that's why we subtract one. I'm going to add that data in here. We're just going to loop through that. It's going to add all of that data directly to here, one through six, adding all that information here. Okay, so once we have that, then what I want to do is I want to add one more thing and I want to add the row of that. When we create a new entry, we're going to put that row, whatever that row is right here, I want to put that inside P. That's basically the row here, just this row. This is going to help us later on. So row 19 or whatever it is. And we're going to use inside, inside this, I'm just going to use a formula so that regardless, that way if we ever delete a row, they're always going to be equal. Now we can delete rows unless we're using sharing. You've, sometimes you see me put the rows in here. Sometimes you see me put the formulas. If we're going to be working with sharing and sync, where we're going to be sharing this data around the world, we can never delete rows. In that case, well, you put a fixed row. Okay, but in this case, we're not. Okay, so that's the differentiation. So the last thing is we're just simply adding a row in here. Good. I'm glad I got to show that part to you. That was important. So then all I want to do is just entry account because I want to know how many entries were. So for every time we do that, we're going to increase the entry count. Last thing is inside that loop, we need to clear out that file name. If we don't clear it out, it's not going to cycle through and loop it. So we have to clear out the current file name using directory empty, and that's going to clear it out. So that allows us to loop through every single file. And then the last thing is something you saw before, message box entry count equals time and entry dates have been added. Okay, So that's basically how we pull data and how we bring it into the database. Now, if we take a look inside the user, we're not gonna go over every step, but it's relative to the same thing. We're gonna bring in the information from the user file. In this case, we only have three columns, and we're gonna do the same thing. So just we're looking inside the user file for new users or change users, and we're gonna update the users. Same thing for the project macros. Again, all we're doing in the project, again, we're looping through three, we're going to check for that information. So we're just basically checking on the individual folders, whether it's users or whether it's projects, and we're bringing up. So now, the same exact thing. This is why I can go a little bit faster now that we've been over that. We're doing the same thing if we go into our scenarios here, and we didn't make any specific changes, so I can leave that. And uh, inside our time and billing folder, you see all these things. So if there's a customer update, we're going to basically do the same thing. We're updating the customer. The only difference is there's no filter on here. 
right? So if we wanted to add a filter, we could. If we wanted to add a specific filter, I could set up a filter here. Like let's say I only wanted certain types of customers, I could do that here. Remember you saw the filter. So basically any type of customer update, we're gonna send the information to Dropbox. Again, I'm mapping it to the customer file. I wanna send the customer ID, the name, and the date. That's all I wanna do there inside that. So also inside our scenarios back in here, we also have updates based on projects and based on users. So you get the idea. All we're doing is making changes to any one of those and they're coming to the folders and then we're using a macro and every time we check the time entry, all those macros are going to run. Let's just go take a look at that one more time. So every time we run this time entry, we're going to check that folder for new or users. We're going to check that folder for new customers and we're going to check it for projects. So we're going to bring in it and then they're just going to either be updating, right? We're either going to update a user if they've changed the name or we're going to be adding a new one. Same thing on projects. We're either going to be updating it based on the project ID or we're going to be simply adding the new one and the same thing for customers so that everything gets added in here. Okay, great. So that's how we bring information from Toggle inside Excel. So now we know how we update and all the macros are relatively the same. And that macro is of course tied to this button right here. So if I right click inside here, click assign macro, we see that the time tracking, it is that same macro that we just went over. That is the macro that gets, so everything gets checked, everything gets added. Okay, so now we know how we get that information added to that, but how do we add it in? So for example, now we know we, we've got it added in here, right? So here, but what I wanna do is I wanna create invoices based on that. Well, let me add a little bit more data so that we can see that. Okay, I've just added some more time entries. So you can see them here in the time tracking, there's more entries. So now let's go ahead back into the invoice, click on our button here, and we're gonna see four more entries have been added. We'll take a look inside the invoice items list, the items there, and we have these four items along with the one we had previously. So we've got those, we've got it on uh, two different projects. We've got projects that ends in 193 and 552, so we got different projects. So what I wanna do now is I wanna create invoices based on the individual products. So that means if I've got different items, I want to create a single invoice for a single every project. So if I've got, notice this is 552, I've got three different items for project 552, and I've got two different items for 93. So when I create that, I wanna create an invoice based on those time entries. So I wanna create two different invoices, one with three items here, and one with two items. So when we go into the invoice, and that's just what we're gonna do with this macro here. What I wanna do is I'm gonna review those pending. So if I click review pending, it's gonna tell us we have one of two. So here's one, here's that project. We got a macro that's gonna create automatically invoice based on those time entries. We also have some information here based on hours and rates. Let's take a look at some of the defaults that we have set up in the admin screen that's gonna help us automate this and then we're gonna go into the macro that creates that. So inside the admin screen, we've got some information. We've got a vocabulary. I've got one left on empty, I'll add it. I've got an invoice, customer project, which we can work with, a tax name, which we're working with, and then a service text. So there's just some vocabulary that we can add this. You can build on this, right? I did a lot on this, but I'd like to see you add more. So I've created a really good foundation. I'd love to see what you can do with this application. There's so much potential. So there's a lot that's still left to be done. You know, I only use these, I only work on these like two or three days maximum. And then I've got to move on to another project, but I like to set up a nice foundation you can work on. So are we going to be rounding times up or down? Are we gonna to round to the nearest hour or two hours or one hour or half an hour or whatever? What about the due dates? Are we gonna default the due dates to 30 days or whatever dates when we create an invoice? Are we gonna use tax or not? Notice when we create this invoice, we're using tax, but if I were to say, turn this into no, click on no, what it's gonna do is gonna clear all the tax out. Now we have no taxes right here. So now also we need to clear out the tax amount, but we can also clear it out. Notice there's no tax. We'll keep the tax on for now. Um, items tax default, are we going to, so each one we create a brand new invoice here, do we want those items taxed by default, yes or no? We can tax or untax them just by uh, selecting that, but do we want them taxed? So we can set that up in yes or no. What is the default tax rate? That is the tax rate, and what is the name of that tax? We also need to know the tax name here. So we have all that information, the tax name is located here. 
So if we want to change that to GST, it's going to be reflected on the invoice. So we can do that as well. So what is the billing based on? It's going to be based on this part I haven't done. I'd like to see you do it. I'd like to automate the billing based on a customer rate or based on a project rate or based on a user rate or based on an item. So much potential in this application. And again, the minimum build, what is the minimum amount of time that we're going to be billing? Is it two hours or one hour? We can set that up here. Notice I've set it to one. And therefore, regardless of the times that we put in, notice we have one one hour automatically, even though we've worked less than times or less than one hour. Notice our start time is 11.23. Our start time here is, you know, one minute. Our start and end time here, again, one minute and one minute each, but yet our hours are minimum because we have a minimum hour. So we've been able to do that. And I'm going to walk you through that. I just want to show you that. We also have the database row here. This is the row that the invoice item is assigned to. So 19, 20, 22. Same here, 19, 20, and 22. So we can keep track of that row. That way, when we make changes, we know where to make those changes, where to put the information back in. Okay, so then we can also skip that one and go to the next one if we want to. So that's going to help us. So I'll update that. And then we can also skip to the next project. If I skip there, remember the other project is going to show two different items. Okay, so we can click review. We're going to go back to three. So as we, it's, it's going to show both. If we try to skip again, there's no other products. We only have two projects with unbilled items. So review, here we go back to this one with the three one. So what I want to do is I want to create this and I want to send it to Stripe. But let's go over the macro that can help generate this. So basically, again, let's go back into our invoice. We have five items here, five items. Two items on one project here, 93, the one that ends in 193, and one that ends in two. So I want to create basically a unique list of project IDs. And I want two projects in that list. I want 552 and 193. I want those two. And I want that unique list right here. So I want to create a unique project. And I only want to create unique projects where the invoice has yet to be created from that, right? So we only want to focus on those called unbilled, right? They're now no longer, invoice has not been created for them. We're only going to focus on that. If an invoice has been created, we're going to ignore that. So we're going to use an advanced filter for that. And then what we want to do is I want to know all the projects, the unique projects, in which the invoice ID is equal to empty, right? So we can do just the equals here. So here's our criteria here. We're going to run an advanced filter here. Then I've got the two projects here. So then what I want to do is I want to take this project and I want to run another advanced filter. I want to know all of the unbuilt items for this project, right? So in this case, it's three, right? So if I am, so let's take the project ID, the one that's ends in 552. I want to know all the unbuilt items, which is going to be 19 here, the row 19, this one here, and this one. So it's going to be those three items. I want to run that advanced filter. And I want to bring all of those items inside here. I want to bring them all right here. And then what I want to do is I want to take this information and I want to bring it inside the invoice. But before I do that, I need to figure out what are the hours. I need to figure out what are the rates and the total and the tax. So I need to figure some things out before I bring over information. I also need to know what is the billing item that we're going to use. I know the date. I know the description because that came from Toggle. I know the start time and I know the end time. I know all that and I also know the database row. So I, we've got all that information. But we need to figure out what is the right billing item. That billing item is going to be based on this default, a default billing item here, whether it's installation or whatever it is. Installation in this case, right? I want to know that default billing item is going to be here. If I change it to design and I review that, it's going to change the default billing item to design. So we can set our default billing item. So I need to determine that based on what's there. I need to determine the hours based on some information here, whether we're rounding up or down. And I also need to know whether we're rounding to the nearest hour or two hours. So if I change just to two hours, right? And we're going to run that again. It's going to change all. Okay, so if I change the minimum build time to two hours, right? And we go back to the invoice and we review the pending, it's going to change all those to two. So that's it. So we can set our minimum. So we need to determine, I need to do some calculations in order to do that. So that's just what we're going to have here. So we need to calculate our quantity build. I need to calculate the rate. What is that rate? And I need to calculate the total. And I need to determine whether it's uh, taxable or not. So what we want to do is we want to create some formulas. And I'm going to put those formulas up here. Then when we have our results from our advanced filter, I'm going to bring down those formulas just where they need to be. We don't need formulas where they don't need to be. I'm going to bring them down right here. So let's go over some of these formulas. So I want to know what the quantity build is. What is the, how much is the quantity build? First of all, I want to make sure that if our 
task start data, we're basically subtracting our task end date and time minus our task start. That's going to give us the total time that was worked on that specific task. If it is less than the minimum build time, what is that minimum build time? Let's take a look inside, back inside here. Notice I've created a name range called minimum build time in here. For us, it's that one hour, right? That's the minimum that we can build. If the time that they work is less than that, then we know to set the minimum build time to this. But not just the time. I don't want the time. I don't want one hour or one and a half hour. I want the actual equivalent to that. So what I want is one or two. Or for example, if it goes to 30 minutes, I want this to change to 0 0.5. And so what we could do is with a formula on that, right? I want a half an hour. I want to know it's half an hour. I want to use this, the minimum built quantity. So we've got the minimum built time. So is that minimum built quantity inside the name range? And that's going to come from this. I know it's a ton of information, but it's a lot to, you know, I want to show you how powerful it is, even though if you don't get every single concept, right? You can always download this for free using the links in the description. And I hope you do just that. So we have that. So basically, I just created a little bit of an index formula and match. So I'm going to look this up based on this table here. This is we have the called the times. And then I've got another one based on here based on the decimal times. So if I use an index match here based on that information, based on what's here, I can determine what is what is the value of here. And we can round that up. So that's all we're going to do here and here. So I want this particular minimum build quantity. I want this inside our formula here. So let's go back to the invoice item. So basically, if the task end date minus the task start date is less than the minimum build time that we need to set the minimum build time, right? So if the AM3 minus AL3 is less than the minimum build time, then we want to set the minimum build quantity. What is that quantity that we have? Otherwise, what we want to do is I want to know whether we're rounding up or rounding down, right? If admin J4, that's the round up or down, if it's up, then we're rounding up. To get that, what I want to do is I'm going to use the round up formula. We're going to use the integer. We're going to start at the integer. What is it? I want to know the integer of whatever the end time is minus the start time. So that's going to get us that, that integer. I just want to know the whole number of that. I'm going to multiply that times 24 hours. Why is that? Because if times are 0.6 or 0.7, that's in base and decimal, but I want the whole numbers, right? In Excel, a day is one. Let's go over why that's important, right? A day is one. And so if I've got a full day, it's going to be basically one divided by 24 equals one divided by 24. That's going to get us a decimal. So if I want to know one hour, if they've worked one hour, I'm going to get 0 0.046, but I don't want 0 0.0416. I want one hour. So to do that, I'm going to take this number here and I'll multiply it times 24. That's it. I want that one hour to build. So multiplying that and going to integer, it's going to allow us to do just that. So that's just what we did inside here. We're going to take the integer, we're rounding up, we're doing the subtraction, and I'm going to round it up by two number of two digits. I'm going to multiply that times 24. That's going to get us the total number of hours. And I'm going to and round up quantity. What is this? Remember, we're rounding up by how much? How much are we rounding up by? We're rounding up to the nearest what? One hour. So we could do that. This one's called round quantity. We're rounding up. If I want to round up to the nearest 15 minutes or whatever, it's going to change that to 0.25. That roundup quantity is going to go to 0.25. So that is how we get that round up. I want to know how much to add to that. How much are we rounding up, whether it's one hour or a quarter hour or whatever. So that's going to do it just inside that. So then the same thing is for the round down. So that's if it's round up. If it's round down, we're going to do relatively the same thing, but we're going to use round down. We're rounding down to the nearest 30 minutes or 40 minutes or, or whatever we have based on that round quantity. So we're rounding down based on that or rounding up. Okay, so that's going to get us our quantity build. I know I'm moving fast here, but we've got a lot to cover. Okay, so I want to know the billing rate. So this is the one that you may want to expand on. You, I've added the billing rate based on the item, based on this item here, right? What is this item billing rate, right? But you can do more than that, right? Default billing item, right? What is our default billing item here? Is the, this right here. This is called our default bill item design. Now, what I want to do is I want to look it up 
inside our billing items here and I want to determine the default right here and I want to determine the default cost here. So if our design is $50, I want to put in $50. But what you can do is you can add additional features. You can add a cost rate or you can add a billing rate for a user. And so that means if you have this set to billing based on the user, you can set the billing based on the user or a project or a customer, right? So that's it. You can have a billing rate in here in your customers. So many ways to go. Or you could have a billing rate based on your project. So you can put billing rate and cost rate on a base specific project. Then based on this, the rate is automatically set whether it's user or customer. So it's just more of a formula, but you know, kind of ran out of time. There's a lot to go on. So basically just giving you some ideas, you can force that billing rate based on a customer or project user or item lots of different direction to go we're going to just going to use items for our purposes here but i wanted to show you that so you would just build out this formula more based on whatever the default settings is in the app we're using billing items so all we're going to do is basically going to match that we're going to index that bill rate billing rate and we're going to default based on whatever the default billing items that's going to return that 50 dollars that's the billing. Then all we need to do is just multiplication. I want to multiply it. And remember, we're starting out with the row three. So it's all based on the third, the row three here, which is our first row. Then when I bring the formulas down, it's going to automatically start out row three. Then I just want to determine if the default tax is yes, then we're going to charge tax. Otherwise, no. So that is it. That's all we have to do. Then what I'm going to do is just bring down, determine the last row, and then bring down these formulas. Let's take a look inside the macro. That's the concept. Now we'll take a look at the macro. Now that you understand the concept of what we're trying to do once we bring down those formulas all i need to do is take all this data and bring it directly over inside here just like this just bring it all over here it's relatively easy once we have the formula set up so inside the macro let's take a look inside the macro now you've got a pretty good idea this is called uh what i want to do is going to be invoice review so the first step we're reviewing invoice that is the macro that's been tied to this button here review pending so the first thing what i want to do again is get that in unique invoice these two items right here. So that's the first macro that we're going to do right here. So again, they're going to determine the last row based on the invoice items. If the last row is less than three, then exit the sub, we have nothing left. We're going to run an advanced filter. We've done this before if you watch my videos. And then we're going to use it based on A2, that data. And we're going to use the, again, this A2 through A3 is going to be our criteria right in here. Let's move that over a little bit to the left so we can see that criteria based on invoice not having right only i only want to focus on those without an invoice number only those are unbilled right no longer built so invoice id is going to be equal to empty that is our criteria here our results are going to go directly inside a b so the last part of our advanced filter is just that our unique results are going to go into a b we want to make sure you're unique because i only want those unique project ids so I want that. So A, B, 2 is we're going to go. We're going to determine the last row. In, the, in this case, the last result is 4. We're going to put that into a variable called last result row. If it's less than 3, then we just we need to let there's no unbuild, right? If there's if there's nothing here, then our last results rows would be 2. And then that means there are no unbuilt projects. So we want to let the user know that there are no unbuilt projects. The first thing what I want to do is I want to clear B15. What is in B15? Let's take a look at that inside that. In the invoice here, making sure that we're on the invoice here, B15 is the review row. That's the row that we're on. So we're always going to start out. I think I need to set that to invoice. So that means the review row is going to be based on there. So we're going to loop through rows, three, then four, and however many, five or six, or however many down. I want to keep track of what project we're reviewing. So three. And that's going to be 15. We're going to clear it. I think I have to set the sheet on that here. Oh, it's here. Already good. Invoice B15. Going to clear that. I don't want to make sure that we're going to clear that if there's no current. So we're going to set that to three. Our first one's going to be set to three. We're going to start it off on three, and we're going to work our way down. Then what I want to do is I want to clear out the existing. I want to run a macro that's going to clear out. That macro is going to clear out all these fields, clear out these fields, these fields, everything that's going to clear it all out. Okay. So once we have that, we are then able to go back into that and load that information. So then what we're going to do is we're going to do this, run this macro called invoice load and build projects. So all we need to do, all I need to do is just set the row to three here. I know it's three. And what that's going to do is it's going to set, we know, now we know which project we load. The next macro is simply going to take this project ID and bring it over right here. Then we have our criteria to load and our criteria here, these two criteria. So that means any project with this number where their 
project ID is equal to empty, meaning that the invoice, excuse me, the invoice ID is equal to empty, meaning it has not billed yet. I want to load all those items for that project. So that's what we're going to do inside the next macro right here. And inside this macro, the loading the unbilled project, we know we're on, we know we're going to start in row three. So that's fine. So we're going to determine the review row is long, the project ID is a string, the customer ID is a string, the user ID is a string, so I need all that as a string, and because I, I need to look for that project, I need to look for that user, I need to look for that project, so I need to look for all that and find that out. We're going to dimension the found project as a range, the found customer and the found user, because we have all those IDs, but I need to bring in the project name, I need to bring in the customer name, and I need to bring in the user name, so I need to bring all that in because we only have the IDs from that. So. I also want to know that the, the review row here is going to be based on B15. Remember, the invoice B15, we've set that to three. That's going to increment up. We've set it to three. It's going to increment however many projects that we have to review. So we're going to have that there. All right, so then we've set that there. Then we're going to move on. So we're going to clear all the information from the invoice. Everything's, we want to clear everything out from the invoice. So we're just going to clear, run the clear contents. I want all before we... We do that, it's just going to clear everything out. Once it's cleared out, then what I'm going to do is bring in all the new information from that. So with the invoice items, I want to set the project ID is going to be equal to whatever's in A, B in the review row here inside this. So A, B here in the review row, whether it's three or four, I'm going to set it out there. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that project and I'm going to put it directly here inside A, C, three, and that's going to do it inside the code. So range with the invoice items here, range A, C, three is going to equal the project ID. Then I'm going to determine the last row based on all of this data here. All that data, I want to know the last row because we're going to run an advanced filter. We've got our criteria all set up here, so we're ready to run our advanced filter, assuming that we have a last row. We're ready to run it here. It's going to be from A2 all the way through Q. We're going to use the criteria AC2 through AD3. That's our criteria based on that project ID, based on no invoice number. Then we're going to have those results come all the way from AE2 through AQ. Now keep in mind that this, notice there's, that there's a blank here. If we're going to run our results from a blank, we're going to have a blank because I want to copy down the formulas. We have to make sure that when we run our original data, our original data must also include a blank. So notice my original data did include the column Q right here. So our original data, it included a Q. So that's very important. If I try to run it going through P, it's going to create a bug and it's going to say your cannot let's go I'll show you exactly what it looks like so when we try to run that it's going to say something like the extract range has missing our legal file names you've seen this before when you've tried to run this because of field name issues so we have to make sure that we go all the way to Q because that's going to include the bank because our results also include that so let's do that back to Q and so we want to make sure that we have this so our results are going to go AE Two through AQ2. So we're going to bring our results all the way starting here in AE2 all the way through AQ2. We're going to bring all that information over. Okay, so once we have that brought over, then we're ready to determine the last results row. I need to know the last results, all those results. We're going to base that on probably AG or something like that, making sure that there's something that's required. Okay, so we can do that inside the code here. So the last results row in this case is going to be based on AG because they all have descriptions, right? They all have descriptions. So we want to use that as the last row. If it's less than, then go to no items. We're going to skip all this and go all the way down here if there's no items, right? There's nothing we can do if there's no items although I'm almost sure there will be. Okay, so now what we want to do is I want to copy over the dates, right? I'm going to base the item date here based on the start date. And all we need to do is just format this differently. If we don't want to show the times, we just format them as dates. And that's exactly what I did inside here. We just formatted those as dates. So notice that there's still dates. But if we look inside, you see the actual times are there, but we're just formatting them as dates. So that's fine too. So we want to bring in those dates. It's going to be based on those start times. So all I need to do is take the start times and bring them over here into AL, AE equals AL. So that's just what I do inside this line of code here. And that's going to be AE through the last results row equals AL. Copy over the start dates. Next up, I want to def use the default billing item. Remember, we set a default billing item, and I want that default billing item, whatever's in the admin screen here, located here, I12. I'm going to bring that over inside our default billing item directly here inside our invoice. So it's, whether whatever is bringing in column F. So going to have set that default billing item. 
and that's going to be inside AF. Also, next I want to bring down that formula. We've created all those formulas. Now all I need to do is start out with AH3 all the way through AK in the last results row. Formula equals whatever is AH1 through AHK. One line of code can do all that work for us right here. H3 through AK in the last results row equals H1 in formula. That's going to bring down those formulas. Next up, what I want to do is I want to set the invoice load to true. That's going to be located on B2. The reason is I've got to differentiate between a few different changes. When I bring over information from our invoice sheet here, I want to make sure that we understand a differentiate between two types of changes. The type of change where the user is actually making a type of change like this, or the type of change that where we're going to bring it from another. And I'm going to use this here, invoice load, true or false. So bringing true or false is going to do just that. All right, so we've got that, we understand that. And so we'll just clear that out, review the pending. So that's why I want to differentiate. So this is going to go to true, then it's going to go to false. Because inside our worksheet change, which we might get to, you'll see that the differentiate, it won't allow, this won't automate when it's true. When it's true, okay? All right, so we're going to set that true then back to false. And that's when we bring in information over. So we're setting it to true. We're going to then bring over inside our invoice D9 through N in the last row plus 6. Why do we add 6? Well, because our first row here is 9. But yet in our results here, our first row is 3. So we need to add 6. Our first row is here. So we need to compensate for that difference and add 6. So that's going to make that difference. Okay, so now that we've added it over, we're going to bring all that data over. Then we're going to do is going to set B2 back to false. Now what I want to do is I want to determine if we want to find that project, right? I know the project, I know that project ID is located right here, but what I want is a project name. If I look in our projects, project, I got project IDs, I got project names, but I want to take that name based on whatever project ID, I want to put that directly inside our inverse, I want to put it directly inside H. So I've got to find it first to make sure it is. So we've set named ranges up for projects already. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the found project. It's going to be based, I want to use the named range project ID. I've already created that dynamic named range inside our project sheet. I'm going to look for the project ID. We've already defined the project ID up here, so it's no problem. I'm going to look for that based on the values. If it's found, not and nothing means it's found, excuse me, right here, found project is nothing right here. Skipped a few things. If the found project is nothing, that means it's been found. Then what I want to do is H6, this is where our project is, H6. I want to take that and I want to put whatever is inside our project names. Here's our projects right here. Whatever's inside column B, our project names, I want to put whatever's there inside that. So that based on that name. So we can do that here. H6 is equal to B. Remember, our project's names are located in column B. And whatever row it's been found on, found project row. It's going to set that project name located in H6. Then I want to do the same thing for the customer. I want to look for the customer. I want to determine the customer ID. Where's that customer ID? It's going to be found here. Here's our customer here. Our customer ID is found on column C. Remember, it's brought in from there. So we've got our customer ID. Now what I want to do is I want to determine based on this customer ID, I want to look inside the customer customer names. I want to look for this customer ID. I want to determine what row it's been found on. And then I want to return whatever customer name. It is that customer name that I want to place directly inside here. So whatever it is, whether it's customer, I want to place it directly inside here. So that's just what we're going to do with the next part of the code right inside here. So customer ID based on whatever's in C in the projects. Set the found customer row based on the customer ID. We're looking for that customer ID based on the customer ID. Okay. So we're setting up the customer ID here. If it's found, if we found that customer ID, then what I want to do is I want to return that customer name. So inside E3, that's right here, inside E3, what are we going to place there? We're going to place that customer name. Our customer name is located in column B of our customer sheets, and it's based on the row that we found it. That's going to place that customer name directly. Next up, I want to get the username. I want to take whatever user here, and how do we know what user is? Well, if we take a look, all we need to do is just place the first one inside our invoice items list, we see we have a user here. If we take a look inside, right here inside our invoice list, our users are automatically tracked here. Remember column B. So all I need to do is determine the row. Where's our row stored at? Our row stored here, 19, 20, 21. If I know the row, 
and I know that our user is during column B, I can extract that user ID. Once I know that user ID, I can look inside the users, I can find the user ID, I can find what row, and then I can return whatever name, that username, and then I can take that name and I can put it directly inside H5. So that's just what we're going to do with the next few lines of code. So if AO3, right, AO3 is the first one, right, AO3 is located right inside here, just to make sure that we have a specific row right here, AO3, they're going to use the first one. If, as long as it's not blank, I'm going to take that row, I'm going to look inside row 19, I'm going to look for that user ID, B and whatever the row is. That's what we're going to do in here, inside B in the row. So then the user ID is going to be equal to whatever is B and the row, which is in AO3. That's going to set our user ID. Next up, we're ready to look for it. I'm going to set that range, found user, based on the users, based on the user ID, the named range. We're looking for that user ID. If it's found, not found is nothing. Then all we need to do is take H5 and put whatever is inside users. B, that's our user name located in users right here inside name. That's where users are coming from. I'm going to take that name and we're going to place it directly inside here, inside H5. That's just what we do inside this line of code here, B. It's going to set the user name right there. Okay, so that sets up our username. That's all we have to do. That's everything. So all when I click review pending, that's all we have to do is going to bring in all that information here. It's going to bring in, notice we don't have an invoice yet number because we haven't created it yet. And the next step, we're going to create that invoice and we're going to, we're going to save that invoice and we're going to send it to Stripe. Okay, so the first thing what I want to do is I want to save this. I want to make sure we save it. I want to take all this information. We already have the rows associated with it, plus we need to look for any new ones. So we need to determine the last row, and we need to save all this information to the invoice item. So basically, I want to save all the rest of the information here based on those or any new rows. So we're going to use a macro called save invoice or invoice save. So let's go into that macro now. So taking a look inside invoice macros, I've got several macros. We're not going to get to all of them, but basically I want to get to this one, save update. Why is that important? Obviously, we need to save and or update it. It's going to be the same macro whether we're saving or we're updating invoices. If we take a look inside the macro here, is that macro that I ran that saved that? Let's take a look inside here. This macro sent to Stripe, we assign that macro. It is going to, if we edit that macro, you see the first thing we do inside this called save and send. The first thing is that save update macro. So that's the macro I want to go for. I'm going to go over this macro first. Then I'm going to go over this macro, this macro, this macro, and then we're done. Okay, so let's take a look inside this macro first. So all we're going to do is just go to the definition and going to go directly. It's inside the invoice macros. So we do need to check for that there's required fields. I need to make sure that B8, why is that important? B8 is going to be our customer ID. I want to make sure that we have a customer ID, right? We're not getting to all this today, but customer row is going to be based on, right, if I choose an incorrect customer here, B8, which is based on a match from, is going to be gone, right? So I want to make sure that we actually have a correct customer. B8 will tell us if it's correct because we're matching that customer name. So B8 is going to help us with that. So if B8 is, is empty, then we want to make sure, please select a customer from the drop-down list before saving this invoice, making sure that we have a correct customer. All right, now we're going to determine the last item row based on column E. In case there's no date, I'm just going to base it on a billing item. So then what I want to do is I want to loop through all the items and make sure that we have enough items, making sure that we have, if there's no items, if it's less than nine, then we need to let the user know to please add items to the invoice. So if the last item is based on, if the last item is less than nine, please make sure to add at least one item. Okay, now that we have those, we know that they're items and we know that we've got a customer, we can then make sure, determine whether it is a new or an existing because it is the same macro that we're going to be running, whether it's a new invoice or whether it's an existing invoice. So I need to determine all the in the main invoice is going to be located here. I'm going to save all this information here. I want the invoice ID, the date, the due date, the status, the customer ID, and so on and so forth, everything here. So how do we do that? Well, first thing we determine is, is there a row? So it's going to be based on this number. For example, if I enter invoice one here, we know that this has been previously saved. We know that this invoice and here on B3 has an, a row. It's located on row four. If we look in the invoice list inside row four, we see invoice has been saved on row four. So B3 is going to tell us whether it's a new. If B3 is empty, like it is in this case, 
empty, it's a draft invoice. We know this invoice has yet to be saved. So we're going to determine that, whether it is B3. So if, in this case, if B3 is empty, then it's a new invoice. Put a new invoice. Else, existing invoice. Put that down here. Invoice. So there's a few things we need to do if it's a new invoice. First thing I want to do is determine the invoice row. It's going to be based on the invoice list here. It's going to be the first available row plus one. Next up, inside this, inside just for new ones, I want to give it an ID, a brand new ID. We're going to use the next ID for that. So if we see here inside B4, we're going to use the max function, max, the invoice ID plus one. That's going to give us the next available ID. If for some reason there's no data at all inside that list, it could create an error. So the reason we have it, if there's an error, we're going to default it to one. So I'm just going to make sure that we default at least to one in case of an error. But our next one in this case is 12. Okay, so we want to assign, I want to take that 12 and I want to put it directly inside here in the first available row. In this case, it would be A15. What I also want to do is add in a little bit more information. I want to take that one and I also want to place that invoice ID right here located in H2. So those two things I want to do if it's a new invoice. So first we determine the invoice row. Next up we set A4 to whatever A and whatever invoice row, whatever is located in B4, which is our next invoice ID, next invoice ID. Next up I want to take that next invoice ID, whatever we just placed in A, and I want to put it in H2. These three things are the things we're going to be doing if it's a new invoice. If it's an existing invoice, all we need to do is capture the row of that inside B3. Next up, so everything else, we're going to use data mapping. We've done this before if you've seen my videos. All I'm going to do is loop through columns 2 to 13. We've got data mapping here. All of these individual cells, H5, tie into, so for example, H5 ties directly into here. You see H5, that's the user. So service tech, a user, same thing. So it's going to basically take whatever's here and it's going to place it directly inside that column here. So we're going to loop through all of those here, all the way from two, all the way to the last, bringing in all the information. That's all we have to do inside that macro. Next up, I want to focus on the items, right? I didn't use data mapping here. So this is what it looks like when we don't use data mapping. It's a lot of work. So then again, what we're going to do is invoice item row nine to the last row. So I've saved all the invoice information. I've saved all this information above here, payment information. And we got two paid amounts. I'll fix that before it gets sent to you. Um, probably don't need this thing right here at all. Probably clear that out. Don't need that one there. Payment paid on. That's good enough. That's good enough. And so what we want to do is I've saved all this information, but now I need to save the individual items, the individual billing items, to another database. And those are going to go inside here. If there's a, if they're existing already, we need to update the row. If not, we need to add a new row. So we're going to loop through that. We're going to start out at nine, and we're going to go to the last row. And we're going to determine does is it have a current row? If this is, it does. Then we're going to use that row. If, for example, if it doesn't, if we've added an item, there's no row here. Then we need to add the row. So that's just what we do inside the next lines of code. So we're going to loop through that for invoice item row nine to the last item row. If n equals empty, then it's a new item. Right? Our rows are located in M. That's this column right here, right? It's a new item. So this would be a new, this would be existing. So I need to determine the row which we're going to save it on. That's the invoice item row. We can use column N to do just that. Okay, so if it's N, so then we're going to assign the invoice item. If it's a brand new item, we're going to assign it to the first available row inside the invoice items. We're going to, again, assign a next, we're going to just use an entry ID. B12 is going to keep, we're just going to use a, a unique entry ID if it doesn't exist located in B12. Again, we're going to use the max formula based on all the information there. And we're just going to create a unique uh, next item. This should say next item, not next time, next item ID. Okay, so we're just going to create that unique. We're going to put whatever's in B12. We're going to put that directly here. Those are only for new items. Okay, once we've added that, then what I want to do is, and I want to take whatever row we just placed in, I want to put it in M, where we just created a new row. Let's say we added something to row 24. I'm going to take that row inside 24, and I'm going to place it directly inside N. So we know we now have a database row of 24. So moving on, next up, we're going to basically save all of the information. We don't need to go through row by row, but I'm going to save all the information, individual item, all the columns here 
directly inside our invoice items here. So all the way from B, all the way over, everything gets saved, whether it's the tax and it's, and it's gonna all come directly from here. So all this information here gets saved in individual columns in the invoice items list. So everything gets saved. And we just loop through every single item to do that. So that's it. That's all we have to do. Okay, great. So that's that first part of the macro. Remember, that's the first part of the save update. That gets everything saved. But now what I want to do is I want to show you the next part. How do we get into Stripe? So let's take a look at let's close this out. The next item was invoice add items. I'm going to next next thing involves Stripe. So let's go into Stripe and focus on that for now. And let's take a look inside Stripe. Stripe uh, is a fantastic payment tool, right? Here's our account. Now, the good thing, there's so many great things I love about Stripe. You can create multiple accounts. It's free. It's, it's available in many, many countries around the world. Hopefully, it's available in your country. It's a payment processor like PayPal, but it's far, far better than PayPal. It's clear, it's easy to get around, it's concise. You've got a view testing data. So all of our work today is gonna to be inside the test data. All you need to do is click test data here and everything, everything you do, creating customers, creating invoices, managing payments, it's all test. It's also known as a sandbox in some places. So I love it, Stripe, is, and that, and that includes payments, balances, reviews, everything is in test. So notice this is all test data because we're viewing test data. So. Create a Stripe account, it's free. Connect your bank and your credit card if needed and get started. So we won't go into creating an account, but we'll assume that you can get that far. And then basically what you wanna do is create the test data. And they've got amazing developers and APIs here. So you've got API keys, test API keys. So you'll create a test API key and we'll go through that in a moment. But basically you've got customers, you can create customers, you've got creating invoices and invoice items. So we're gonna go through all that. So let's just, the first thing you need to do is if the customer doesn't exist in Stripe, we need to create a customer. Once that is done, then we create billing items, right? Items that need to be billed to that customer. Then what we do is we take all those items and then we create an invoice based on those items. So basically creating invoice is three phases customer, invoice items, and then invoice, and then of course, lastly, the payment processor. So we're gonna go through those. So what you wanna do is, again, Integromat's gonna help us with all of that. So let's look at the create a customer. Now that you understand how to create it. So again, we've used three components with this one here. And we're saying, okay, so what is a create a customer? So again, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a webhook. When I add a brand new customer, I'm gonna send a webhook to Stripe. And how do we do that? Well, again, let's take a look inside the macro here, just to make sure inside the customer macros, when customer toggle check for new order updates. So I've got them all inside the Stripe. All the macros for Stripe are located in the module for Stripe. Okay, customer add new. Okay, so if you want, if you added a new customer, we want to first add it to Stripe. If, and how do we know that? How do we know if it's a new customer? Well, the first thing we know is based on E3. If we remember correctly, inside invoice, if we add a new customer, let's say Harry uh, Hogan, okay? If we add a new customer, we know that inside here, that a customer ID here, here is gonna be blank. There's E8, it's gonna be, it's gonna be blank because there's no customer row based on the name, right? We're gonna use an index match. This is going to be located in B8. So we know that it's going to be blank. So then we can add that customer. But we also want to make sure that we have to make sure that there's a valid customer email. And we want to make sure that we have a customer name. So E3 and E5 to do that. If those are blank, E3 or E5 are blank, then we will want to make sure that we add it. So we need to let the user know, please add a specific customer or please add a specific email. So that's what we're gonna do inside this macro here. Then we're gonna exit a step out. Okay, if B8 equals empty, here's where we go. Then we know it's a new customer. New customer, that's when I wanna add a new customer. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add all this information to the customer database. That's relatively simple. Determine the first available row in the customers and then add all the customer information here. Next up, what I wanna do, if it's an existing customer, then we just determine the customer row. Gonna determine the customer name based on E3. Gonna determine the customer address on E4 and the customer email on E5. So we're gonna get all through the variables. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a webhook. Now we've done this before, if you haven't seen it before, but basically all we need to do inside Integromat is add a webhook. And when we create this, it creates this webhook for us, right? So basically all we would need to do is just click add new, create a webhook. Webhook is what we want. It's gonna create this automatically. As soon as we click add, it's gonna create that. It's gonna create this webhook. It is this webhook that we want to put in the code. So all we would need to do is just copy the address to the clipboard. 
Then what we're going to do is we're going to paste that directly inside here. This is the part. Remember, this is very important. When you get your file, you download this file, you're going to need to update this. It won't work because I'll probably remove all the webhooks because it won't make sense or I'll turn off my webhooks and it won't help you. These webhooks won't help you. You want to put your own in there. Then what I want to do is I want to send all this information to Integromat and I want to send them into variables. So the first thing is going to be the customer name inside a variable here. This is the label. This is the variable, the information that's going to hold. I want to send the customer address. I want to send the customer email. I want to send all that to Stripe. And so basically it's going to send it all. The first thing what it's going to do is going to send it to here. So what does that look like? We can look in the history of this and see just what that looks like. So let's take a look inside. Let's take a look. I think this one contains some data here. If we take a look inside here, we can see in the history, the first thing it sent, it sent the customer name, it sent the customer address, and it sent the customer email. So that's great. Then inside Stripe, then we created a brand new something called Stripe called Create a Customer. Well, how do we do that? Let's go into the diagram, back into the diagram, and let's assume that we wanted to create a brand new one, right? So let's say click on here, and we want to create a brand new one. Just click here in Stripe. If you don't see it down here, let's move it up here. Let's move that up. Let's move it up here a little bit so you can see it here. Okay. If you don't see Stripe here, just click it, and you just click Search for Stripe inside Stripe. So how would you do that? So you click Stripe and you lo locate it and then it's going to come up here. So, But it's already located here so we already have it so it's not going to come up. So inside Stripe what do I want to do? Well I want to create a customer. Right? So you look for that. Create a customer inside here. Look for it. This is the one we want. Create a customer. Once we have that, I'll remove this in a second, then what you want to do is you want to create add a new connection. So we're going to click add. It's going to look for it. API key. You assign it a name test. Then what you need is you need an API key. So where are we going to get that API key from? Again, this is what's great about it. It's the test. So you can create as many as you want. So inside the developers here, you see API keys, right? Then here's your API keys. All you need to do is just create a brand new one or you reveal this and you you've got your one, you create API keys. Here's your API key. So you just reveal the test key and you copy it over. And that's all you need to do is just create a new one. So notice it's viewing test ID. So these are all just for test. You can copy that, the secret key, and you're going to place that directly inside here. Once it's placed in here, like this one here, and you click continue. And that's going to automatically create that, that node. Then we're good to go. Then what do I say? Then we've got a description. Then what we want to do is we want to take all that information here with the description, and the email, the name, the phone number. You've got all this information that you want to add to Stripe. So now we can remove that. And we can go back into the actual one. So here I've added in the customer uh, email from here. I've added the customer name here. And if we look the customer address I've added here. So I've added all that information into Stripe. Then what I want to do is I need, what I really need to do is I need to get that customer Stripe ID and I need to bring that back in here. If we take a look inside our customer files here, I want that Stripe ID and I want to put it right here. So once we add a customer to Stripe, Stripe will send us the information back. That information is going to be that customer ID. So we can use what's called a webhook response. A webhook response, you just click here and you click here and you click webhook. And as long as you've already added original custom webhook, the next thing is going to be available is that webhook response. So you click webhook and is that response that you'll get here. It is this one right here, webhook response. Inside that webhook response, what I want to look for is a custom ID. So Stripe is going to give us all this information back to us, but all we really want is that customer ID right here. So you just click here and you add that. It is that information that's going to be sent back to Excel. So we turn that on, turn that on, it's going to wait. So when we send that information back into the macro, when we send it using this send, we're going to send all that information, the response back response here is going to be that customer ID. Where am I going to put that customer ID? I'm going to put it in column D in the customer row. That is it. That's all we have. Just It's very, very easy. We just take that response, that customer ID, and we place it directly inside column D. That's the Stripe ID, just like here. Very, very simple. So if I were to add David or Thomas, it's going to do just that. Okay, so now we know how to add customers to Stripe. We can't add invoices unless we've created a customer. So we want to make sure that we do customer add new. Okay, that's important. Now that we have that, then what we want to do is I want to add those invites items, right? So this three-step process is one, make sure that the customer itself has been added to Stripe. 
If it has been added to Stripe, how are we going to know? We know because the customer has it there. So for example, the customer, notice this customer has a Stripe ID B9. They've already got a customer. I've already gotten there. So we know we don't need to add that. If B9 is empty, we know we need to add that customer. So for example, this particular one, Thomas Freed here, or this one, David Davis, they don't have a Stripe ID. So we need to know, we can differentiate that. We know we need to send that information to Stripe, send that customer, because that customer does not currently have a Stripe ID. That's how we can determine that. But we're going to start. Okay, assuming that we do have a customer that does have a Stripe ID, the next is I want to take these items here, and I want to then add them to Stripe. On each individual, I want to add them to Stripe based on that customer ID. Again, we can use a webhook. We're going to use a webhook to loop through that, a webhook and integramat integra integra together. So that's just what we do here. And we're going to do that in Mira. So we're going to do that inside our time and building. We've got our folder here. We're going to add, use a scenario called invoice add items. So again, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to create another webhook. And we're going to add information to Stripe. And then we're going to get a response for each one of them. So relatively simple. So we do just that with this macro here, invoice add items. So with the invoice, again, I want to make sure that we have information, right? We need to know if we're going to add a new customer or not. Are we doing it? If B9, let's take a look back in the invoice here, should we add that new customer or not? If B9, there's no Stripe ID, we need to add that new customer. Very important, right? We want to add it to Stripe first. We just went over the macro. B9 is going to tell us if it's new or not. So if B9 is empty or B9 is zero, then we need to know we need to add that new customer. This macro will take care of the adding the customer to the table and adding the customer to Stripe. Okay, next up, what I want to do is I want to determine the last row of the items. Well, in this case, the last row based on call me is 11. And I'm going to loop through all those from 9 to 11. So to do that, we go in here. Then what we want to do is we want to determine the Stripe. We've already run this macro, so we know that the customer now has a Stripe ID. That's important. We're going to put that into a variable, Stripe customer ID, because we need to send that ID to, to Stripe. We're going to, we also need the invoice ID. It's going to be based on H2. Does it currently have an invoice ID or not? If it does, it, it's fine. We can use it. If it doesn't, no problem. That's okay. But it should. Why should it? How does it? Because we've already run the macro. We've already run. Remember, this is the second part of macro. We've already saved, initially saved this invoice. When we save it, it assigned H2 is assigned automatically inside that. Remember, we put that invoice number as soon as we save it. So it's already got an invoice number. So we have that invoice number. We're going to put that inside a variable here. Now we're going to ready to run our loop from 9 to the last row. I want the item name, what's located in column E. Let's drop this down. I want the item name here. I want the item description, which is in column F. I want to put that into a variable. I want the amount. And I want the quantity. I want to put all those things. So I need to send all of that to Stripe. I also want the customer address and the customer email. So I'm going to put all that information into variables. Next up, we're ready to do another webhook. Again, the same type of webhook, but this time we're sending different information. We've created another automation just as we did inside Integramat. Here it is right here. Again, this webhook is going to do just that for us. This one is going to send create an invoice item. We're creating, we're going to run this multiple times for however many items that we have. So that's why it's part of loop. So what are we going to send over to Integramat and then eventually to Stripe? We're going to send that Stripe ID. We need to know the customer ID. Stripe customer ID is here. We're going to send the invoice ID. We're going to send the item description, the item quantity. We're going to send the item amount. We're going to send all of that there. Then what I want to do is send it all, and that's it. Then we're going to get a response back. So that information. So here's what we do. We send it all to them. We're going to get it back. So what are we sending into Stripe? Well, first what we need is the customer ID. Remember, we sent all of this item quantity, item name, item description, Stripe ID, and invoice. So that everything got sent to Integramat. Now we need to bring that information into Stripe. So we need the customer ID. We need the unit amount. And in this case, the item amount is in 100s, right? So so we need to multiply times around it because it's based on cents. So if I have five dollars, right, um, the Stripe's going to see that as five cents. So I need to multiply that times 100 because it's always in pennies. Note the interest amount amount is in cents, right? So we need to multiply that times 100. So keep that in mind. So we multiply that times 100. We do that right there. So next up, I need the item quantity, bringing that in. I need the currency. You can change any currency if you want here. Item description, we're going to bring that in here. We can also add in things like start period and end party. We could add in metadata. We can use the invoice ID if you have your uh, specific invoice. Let's say we're updating an invoice. If we're going to update or making changes to an invoice, we can do that. 
and we can add in different tax rates. Now I've done that. Now I've added tax rates as an item, but you can get into it further and add multiple tax rates. Very, very powerful things, okay? So that's gonna get it all. And then what we're gonna, we wanna do is I want a response. Now every single any item that we add to Stripe gets an ID. It's called an invoice item ID. It's gonna return back to us an invoice item. And that's gonna be coming right here in the body. So I wanna return that. So that is what's gonna come back into our response is that invoice. That's what I want, that invoice item ID. So our response here is gonna take that invoice ID. And then I wanna place that specific ID for that one item. I wanna place that directly in the column. So I'm gonna place that right here right here inside the Stripe ID here. So for example, if we look at an older invoice one, notice that these items have Stripe IDs. They've already been sent to Stripe. So I wanna send that. And when we do send that, it's gonna sign it right here. It's gonna put that Stripe ID here. We know it's been updated. And this is important because when we create that invoices, we need to combine those IDs. So that's the next step. We're simply just adding items to Stripe. So we do all that. And the next step, I wanna add taxes item. If we're charging tax, I wanna add tax as an item here. There's a few ways to do that. I'm just simply adding it as an item like here onto the Stripe invoice, but you can add it in a tax. There's a different ways, but there's a little bit faster to do it this way. So I wanna teach you something a little more simpler, just adding it as an additional item. So how do we do that? If, we do an if, if I-25 does not equal zero, add tax amount. That means there isn't a tax amount located here in I-25. If there's a tax amount, I wanna add it as an additional item. So how do we do that? Again, give it this time, the item name is gonna be able to the tax name. That tax name is located directly inside here, called tax name, it's that tax. So whatever name we put here is gonna appear inside there. And so we're giving that tax, we're giving it the same as the description, giving a quantity of one, and the amount is one, and the customer, again, we're gonna, everything else is gonna be the same, customer address, the customer email, I'm going to send all of that as a, one additional line item on the invoice. So everything's going to get sent over. And then again, the response here, we don't need to do anything with this specific response. It just gets sent. So that is it. So that's all we need to do. So we've created, added all those items, but yet we haven't created the invoice. The next step is called invoice create. We want to actually create that invoice, right? Let's take a look back at where we were. Invoice review macros here. We've, the first thing we did was save the update. The second thing we did was add the items. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create that invoice. That's the one we actually wanna go to. So we're gonna go back into here in the macro and we'll show you how we create that invoice. Close this one out. It is the invoice create. This one's a bit simpler. All I need to do is I need to know the customer ID. I need to know the invoice ID and I need to know the due dates. I wanna send all that over. And also, also we need another Integromat scenario here. So we've done just that inside Integromat here and let's pull up that scenario here. So inside my scenarios here, inside my time building, and I've got one that's gonna be create the invoice test. So this one's gonna create the invoice. Again, very similar. Get this one's gonna be a little bit of a two-step process. We need to do two things. One, we need to create an invoice. Two, we need to finalize the invoice. So again, we've created a unique webhook here, and we're gonna send that information to Stripe. And what information inside Stripe? It's called create invoice. And I wanna send that customer ID. I wanna, this time, we, collection, this is really cool. You could charge them automatically. If they have a, a credit card that's set up, we could charge them automatically, if, assuming the customer agreed to it. Just clicking here, charge automatically. For us, all we wanna do is send the invoice. The days until due, we could set the due date or days, so we could do or, days until due or the due date. I've opted to do a due date. So we set the due date here, just dragging that information over. And then also we wanna know the customer ID, the Stripe customer ID. So that's gonna go right up in here, customer ID. And lastly, we want the invoice ID. I wanna know what invoice, that's our invoice number, 21 or 22. That's gonna go inside the description. So we have our own invoice ID. That's it, that's all we have to do. There's a lot more advanced features if you wanna take a look at some of the other options. We have default payment methods, default payment source, tax rates and discounts and footers and so much great stuff. You can really customize some great invoices. So again, so we've created an invoice. We're gonna send that. The last thing we do is just one step called finalize a draft invoice. And all we need to do is just click the invoice ID. That invoice ID is gonna come directly from this create an invoice. What this does is it generates an invoice. It generates this thing right here, invoice ID, this thing right here. So all we need to do is just 
click on that. One, there's only one option in this, and that's invoice ID, and that's going to create that invoice. Lastly, what I want to do is I want to bring some information back inside our Excel, right? We've created this will create the draft invoice. This finalizes the invoice, and this brings some information back. I want two, really two things. I want to know the invoice number. That would be the Stripe invoice number. And I want to know the URL of where we can make the payments, where the customer, because I may want to send that URL to the customer saying, here's your invoice, please pay. And all we need to do is just send that. So I want those that information there. So the number is basically this one, and I want to separate those by an asterisk. So we could do just that. That's going to come in. This time it's going to come in through the webhook response. So the number is located here. That's the invoice number. And then the hosted URL, the hosted invoice URL going to bring that back in here. So once we get that response, here's our here we're sending, we're sending all that information here. We're getting the response back in here. Then what I want to do is I want to separate the Stripe invoice number using the left based on the asterisk, the left part, whatever the left part. That's going to separate that Stripe invoice. And I also want the URL that's going to come in on the right section, right? So we've got the Stripe invoice and the Stripe URL. And I want to put that information. B5 is going to take on our Stripe invoice here. B5 here, we're going to put that Stripe invoice right here. And let's take a look. B5 here, all the way up here. I'm going to take on that Stripe invoice number, B5 here. And the URL, that is going to go inside B13. So we're going to do all that when we send it to Stripe. So that's it. That's all we have to do. And that's going to get it. So there we go. Let's do that. Now all we need to do is just sit, click Send to Stripe. And it's going to send all that information. It's going to run those macros and do everything that. And then it's going to generate that specific payment. And then so if you take a look inside here, now we've done just that. Okay, let's take a look in here. Now we have a Stripe invoice number. We have a payment URL. And let's take a look inside Integra and see everything that just happened. We're going to go inside the history. Let's uh, not save the changes. I didn't make any changes. We're going to go in the history. Right now, we just created this one second ago, this one right here. If we go into the details, we're going to take a look at everything that happened here. We can see that information went inside here. We have the customer information. We have the due date here. We have all the information here, the custom fields, the transferring data, everything, the customer information, the discounts here, everything, the output, everything that got sent out. We have the stripe that was finalized here, the, everything got noticed, the account name, Excel, everything got sent. Okay, and then what got returned? Let's take a look at what got returned. We got returned this here, this white red, this one right here, one BT. This is, of course, the Stripe invoice number. And then we have a URL here. And all that made it back into Excel right here, actually. And so again, we have that here. Left this is our. And then the last thing we did was save the invoice one more time, right? So inside that macro here, I want to go back into that, show you just exactly what we did inside here, the review here. I'm going to show you those things. Inside here, I'm going to show you everything that happened here inside Review Max. So we did that save, we added the items, we created the invoice, and then the last thing I did was save that again. Why do I want to save it again? Because I just added the Stripe invoice number and I just added the payment URL. All right, let's go back inside that one invoice again. Okay, take a look at this. So this information, this Stripe invoice number, this payment link here, got uh, the invoice link here got automatically saved. So we wanted to save those. And now if we take a look inside this invoice list, actually it was, we were on uh, invoice number one, we have a, this invoice number and we have this invoice. So if we take a look at this here, copy this here, and go into our browser here, go back inside, let's go back into the browser here, paste that in there, take a look at that. We don't need that one. Okay, taking a look at that, and we see 176.50. Now let's take a look at the invoice that got generated. If we download this invoice, and we see that we have an invoice, and we can pull it up here, we can view it up here, taking a look at this. So now we have tax service one, tax service two, design service. So everything is going to match exactly this invoice here, although I was just test service and design service here. So everything matches identically with the, but, but this way the customer can automatically get that here. So very, very powerful. So now what would they do is they've got it. Now they've got a, a payment link. They pay with card. They can pay with the card or they can click this link. If they want to click this link, they also can view this online. Look, they click this link and they can pay. It's the same thing in both ways. Now they click pay. So what I want to do now is when they pay it, I want to bring that back in Excel. So how are we going to do that? Very, very easily. Again, with Integromat is going to help us. We're going to create an automation. So how do we do that? So let's go back into the scenarios here.
and take a look inside again our track and now we have one more called let's say look down here this one test payments okay so this one now what we're going to do is we're going to create automation we're going to watch some events so again this one's called watch events if we're clicking on stripe and we want to look for it we're going to look for watch events if i click on that i want to know what type of event the first thing what we're going to do is we're going to add our payment and what we want to do is oh if we click add i'll show you what to do here watch events here's our test connection here and what kind of group is it so if we look down here what we want to do is we want to look under invoice payments scroll down to invoice payments let's bring this up here so you can see it looking for down for invoice once you find that that's the one we're going to prefer. so invoice here and then what do you want invoice created invoice no i want to do invoice paid invoice paid that's the action i want to do click save so invoice paid is the action let's clear that out invoice paid so if we see that here now we've created a web hook inside stripe and this automatically creates a web book so basically i want to watch events anytime an invoice gets paid in stripe it's going to automatically trigger this and click ok so that's all i did here just delete that we don't delete that so it's the same thing i did here test payment show address so it's going to create a web hook that web hook automatically gets created inside stripe taking a look back inside stripe here let's take a look in the web hooks here this web hook automatically got created here here's where it got automatically created. you can delete them and remove them remember we're only in the test so it doesn't matter so it gets created so that means every time a payment gets created from stripe it's going to send information to integramat and what's it's going to do it's going to send it directly to here then i want to know that information i want to take that information i want to send it into dropbox so i want to basically where do i want to send it i want to send it to my payments folder and what do i want to send i want to send the object number the object number is going to be that payment id let's take a look down here what is the object number now if we scroll down we see object and number it is that invoice number i want that i want to know exactly what invoice so scrolling down here we see object number this is what i want right here that is that stripe invoice number because i need to match it up so i'm going to put that as the file name so then we're going to cancel that so what do i want so now we've defined the file that we didn't need to cancel that then what do i want to send inside i want to create a text file what do i want to put just two things inside that text file i want to put how much they paid the object the amount paid if we look under here under object and we see here under amount paid here not amount due but amount paid Okay, and you find it right here under amount paid, right here, amount paid. That's what we want to add in. So we don't need to add it in twice here. Just once is fine. Then I also want to know the date. What date did they pay? I want to have that information here. So we're going to use the created on. Created is here. It's located at the top. That just gives us the date, the top one here. And I'm going to format. I just want uh, the date that they paid, not necessarily the time. So I want to bring that. I want to bring it into Excel. Again, so then what I could do is have a macro that says, this macro here process payments that macro is going to look in that payments folder it's going to then search that payments folder and decide there so let's take a look back in the stripe and go all the way down here at the bottom in the last macro again invoice payments so this is the macro that's going to assign to that button so found invoice we're going to look for that i need to look for that invoice right i need to find that invoice if we look on our invoice we have that invoice id here i'm going to look for that remember that's that stripe invoice. i'm looking for that i want to find the row it's on and i want to determine the payment amount i want to put the pay date there that's all i really want to do inside this formula and i want to if there's multiple payments i want to loop through all those so we're going to determine the payment count i want to know how many payments are there the folder path right i want to make sure we have a correct folder path that's going to come directly from admin here inside that i want to make sure that we have the right payments folder here located in c7 assuming that we have that then we can move on okay we're going to start the file name again doing well we're going to run through the same process exactly the same as we've done before then what we're going to do is we're going to determine the stripe invoice id that's the name remember the invoice id is the name of the file right we take that and we remove the dot txt remember here inside that we've named that file the object number which is that invoice number dot txt so that's the name of the file if we process the payment let's process let's pay that right now just processing that payment it's going to return that inside a txt automatically take a look inside the payments folder here it is so here's that text house so look at this the name of this 1bd10c4d009 so that's what exactly what i'm going to be looking for inside this invoice list right there so if it's found then we'll be going to be placing it there and you see right here on this first one remember the first one this is it this is what we're looking for 
I'm looking for that Stripe invoice number, invoice one that we generated. If it's found, I want to know the row. If I know the row, then I can process and put the payment amount and put the pay date right in here. So looping through, so we can extract that Stripe invoice number from the file name. Then I want to look for it. We're going to set the found invoice based on the invoice Stripe ID. That's the named range that went here. That's this named range here. Okay? Forget about these. These were just some tests, but they're all going to look like this. We can delete these. I don't want to confuse you. Okay, so they're going to look something like this, right? And so we're going to find it in this case on row four, and then we're going to place it. So we're going to look for that. So all we need to do is look for that. Then what you need to do is take the information inside that text file, pay details, and I'm going to separate it out. I'm going to separate the pay amount, which is going to be the left side of that asterisk. And I'm going to separate the pay date, which is going to be on the right side of that asterisk as our delimiter. Then what I'm going to do is what, if the row is found, if it's found, J through K, J is going to put the payment amount, K is going to put the pay date. So here, payment amount, pay date. Then I'm just going to do that for every single payment that's been found. That's it. That's all we need to do. So if I run this macro here, and we click on the payment processing, and one payment's been applied. We take a look back inside our invoice list. We see that 176 was applied on pay date automatically. So we know the customer's been paid. Wow, what an incredible training. Without any line of code written, we still managed to go almost two hours. All right, well, thanks so much. I really want to see what you can get out of this file. There's so much more you can do that I've barely scratched the surface. I'd love to know your thoughts. Please comment below. Don't forget to subscribe. That really helps us. And if you do want 200 of my best applications, it would be really a great help if you can purchase that. I'll include the link down below. It's just $77 for a short term. All right, thanks so much. I can't wait. We'll see you next week.